Hi, I'm Asher, and welcome to Edible Education with Ocean View School District. Today, we're with Mike Roberts at Baby Root Farms in Camarillo. I'm Farmer Mike here at Little Baby Root Farm, our one acre permaculture farm at the McGrath Ranch in Camarillo. Uh, Baby Root Farm has had many uh, births. So the original Baby Root Farm was born in my mind in the, the fields of McGrath Farm and I was frustrated with these 300 foot beds and all this weeding and I said there must be a way to have smaller scale or uh, more human scale. I began studying historic models, uh, French intensive gardening systems, some Japanese models, of course our Shumash that had this land um, originally and uh, started to put all those together and I started with a 20 foot by 20 foot garden in the Camarillo hillside in 2015. 2017 we form, began forming the McGrath Collaborative. Uh, a lot of Phil's apprentices came together a part of Phil's succession plan and uh, Little Baby Root Farm, we call it today, is one acre of permaculture here at the ranch. And then in 2020, we leapt to 20 acres, so we call that Big Baby Root Farm. So some differences between conventional, organic, and regenerative. Conventional means the farmers are using techniques with synthetic chemicals to regulate pest pressure, to regulate fung fungus, uh, weed pressure. Organic means that you have removed the synthetic aspect. You can use naturally derived oils and soaps to help with some of those things, not as effective. Um, soil and environmental scientists today are telling us conventional ag, while highly productive, is environmentally degenerative. This means it's having a, a negative impact on the environment. To me, organic is a net neutral, more or less, right? So it's removed one aspect, the synthetic chemical aspect, but I always wondered, is there a way to move in a direction of production-based ag that actually improves the environment or is actually regenerative in nature? Cats are natural predators. You notice they have the fangs, they have the claws. Humans have domesticated these animals and oftentimes can't care for them anymore. They end up in these animal shelters. We can take them out of the shelters, provide them a good home here. And just today, when you all arrived, they have a gopher. So incredible, incredible regulation of pests. All animals have a place in the farm, but if you allow them to get out of hand, they'll just annihilate a farm where the salad lettuce is grown. It's like a salad bar for the <laughs> rabbits and the squirrels. So it's regulating the pest pressure in a natural way. It's phenomenal to watch. So one of the main principles of regenerative agriculture is keeping the ground covered. So if we notice on this farm, 95% of the ground is covered, whether it's a living mulch like uh, plants, our California poppies, whether it's a decomposing mulch like wood chips, which is a waste that our arborists uh, can bring here instead of the landfill, or it's uh, something like carapia here, which is a flowering uh, bed. It's so full of life, so full of bees, and these roots dive deep, four feet deep. Why that's significant is regenerative agriculture happens by working with the soil microbiology. So soil microbiology, the life in the soil, the fungi, the bacteria, all the worms and the different arthropods and insects and, and things, what they want, they want it to be dark, they want it to be moist, and they need a food source. And if we have the ground covered with a living ground cover like this, this plant has the intelligence to take energy from the sun, photosynthesize, take what it needs, and put out what's called exudates through its roots. This exudates attract the soil microbiology into the root zone. That soil microbiology eating itself, the life process happening, defecating, is what would inform the nutrient and the flavor profile of those plants. So when we think about something like 
the Amazon rainforest, or we think about the sequoias or these majestic trees we have in California, nobody was fertilizing these things. This is the life process happening. This is the leaves falling, the animals coming, them, <clears throat> their bodies going back into that soil. Uh, digestion happening there and that natural process is producing that life so what we're trying to say is can we apply that to production based agriculture so number one principle is keep the ground covered ideally with living things there's a hundred thousand acres of irrigated farmland in Ventura County 90 uh, percent of that is in conventional 90 or 91 92 percent in conventional ag 8 percent is in certified organic ag and out of that 8%, it's probably like point, you know, zero five, maybe 1% in what we would call is moving towards this regenerative model. When we're trying to farm regeneratively, we're trying to farm in line with nature. Tomatoes want to be grown in the summer, in the warmth of the summer fall for us here. So following that, what nature wants, we want to grow plants that nature wants us to grow during that time. So how big do these tomatoes normally get? So you have a couple different varieties out here. So in your row, you have a slicer, a red slicer. So we can see one here together. So these are still filling out. So these are going to get much bigger than this. They're going to get about the size of an apple, right? Or a common tomato that you see. Now in my row, I've got cherry tomatoes. So you can see these guys are much smaller. So, so I presume they would only get to the size of a large cherry. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you can see they'll put out, the flowers will continue to pull out, put out more fruit uh, on this vine there. So right. multiple varieties in here. And like what seasons do these grow in normally? So the season we're in right now is the summertime and the tomatoes love heat. So for us here in Southern California, Ventura County, they want to be grown in the summer and the fall. If you use something like a hoop house or a nursery, you can grow them year round, but if you're growing them in the soil outdoors under the sun, summer and fall for us here, warm weather or, or hot weather even type of year. But we're coastal, you feel that coastal breeze right there, so pretty mild. And I'll show you how to prune a tomato. So one thing we do, let's see if we can get one right here. So one thing we do from the bottom, we, we wanna leave this main stem here and essentially we're taking off all these lower branches. What we wanna do is, we, these, these are called suckers here. We wanna encourage the, the tomato to go upward, to put its energy upward towards more fruit, more flowers, more fruit, and more ripening of the fruit. So if there's too much foliage, the plant will uh, not produce as much. So as farmers, this is again where we can kind of nurture the process along, we can encourage the plant to put out more flowers, more fruit, more ripe fruit. The reason is the seed is inside the fruit. Nature wants to live on. If, if you're constantly urging that plant along or nurturing that plant along, um, the, the plant will put out more uh, flowers, more fruit, uh, which in turns more seeds. So the, this is part of the life process that's happening. Uh, and a regenerative farmer really tries to pay as close attention to that as possible. All right, today we're gonna to be making ladybug caprese, right? So what we're gonna start with is some mozzarella cheese, cut that into a bit of a quarter inch slice right there. We're gonna want some basil for a leaf for the ladybug, right? Tomato, we're gonna to need a tomato. This is a stem, it's biodegradable, that can go there. We're gonna cut this right in half. Then you're gonna to wanna to cut this half, a tiny little slit so that it looks like wings. Okay, gonna want to use this olive for a head for the ladybug. And we're gonna cut another bit off an olive and mince it up all nice like, kind of like you would garlic. A little bit of olive oil to help that stick. That was a lot and that's okay. Wanna place these speckles lovingly onto this here ladybug so that it looks more like a ladybug and that's like a tomato on basil on mozzarella cheese and then we're gonna want some salt a little bit of salt there this is a salt cellar and then boom 
olive oil. <laughs> we sprinkle that all about the plate so that it looks really nice. So there's your ladybug caprese. Our motto is we do what's needed when it's needed, so we really try to make everything we're doing fun. So if I'm weeding, it's fun. If I'm hauling produce from other farms, it's fun. If I'm packing boxes and inventory, we try to make everything we do fun because farming is so repetitive and so tedious. If you don't, you'll, if you don't fall in love with everything, is you're gonna hate everything, so. Now your farm's really interesting and all that, but the real question is, can you juggle tomatoes? Let's give it a try. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> All right, now the real question is, can you juggle tomatoes? Yes, I think so. <laughs> well, I better stick to farming. Look at this. <laughs> sure. And welcome to Edible Education with... Got this... Supermarket. Got this super. Cut a little slit down the middle. Let's go. Let's go. Talking to you or talking to the camera? I'm talking to the camera. Talking straight to the camera. Hello, camera.